So, Jan, we heard that you've been working on a book. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's coming along pretty good. I'm almost done with it, I think. Mm, all right. Well, what was your inspiration? Well, you know, I just I was reading a bunch of books, and I realized that there was just no stories about my people. You know, where, where are our stories at? Mm, interesting. Well, would you like to read us a passage from your book? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Okay, let's see. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Hey, Josh. Hey, Michael. Hey, are, are, are you going to the uh, to the to the new furry convention next month? It's like, heck yeah! I got this whole new like My Little Pony Fluttershy then, costume going on. You know what? I think we should just get straight to your review. Oh, but I can still keep going. No, 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 no. I think we're good. We'll go ahead and just get to reviewing. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I guess here's my review of uh, American Fiction. Yo, Sharonda, girl, you be pregnant again? If I is, Ray Ray is gonna be a real father this time around. Thank you. One of my favorite aspects of any film is the dialogue. I love a very showy writing that makes the character stand out more. It's why I find the works of people like Quentin Tarantino and Guy Ritchie so appealing. I love hearing what they have to say, wish I could mimic the style in which they say it, and as a result, the characters generally stick in my mind for longer than if the dialogue was more traditional. So when I see a movie like American Fiction where writing is front and center, I get excited to see what the creators have managed to bring to the space with these characters and their words. American Fiction doesn't fail in this respect. Its writing is sharp, witty, and funny, which is a great combination. It doesn't hit every single point as strong as I wish it would have, but it still left an impression on me and ended up being one of my favorite films of 2023. Which as great a year as it was for films, that's saying something. Monk, played excellently by Jeffrey Wright, is a writer and teacher based in LA. His books, while written well, aren't popular enough to leave any sort of impact on others. As a result, when he is in need of a financial boost due to an early event in the film, he finds himself struggling to meet those requirements. Fed up with the writings of other black novelists pandering to their audiences, he ends up writing a book that does just that, but in a clearly sarcastic tone, hoping it sends a message to those who enjoy that type of writing. Yet the book ends up being a huge success, much to his disappointment. And while the money is nice, he ultimately decides that this isn't what he wants out of his career. But no matter what he tries to do to pull out or sabotage the trajectory of the success of the book, people end up loving it all the more. Oh, what to do. It's easy to see the trailer that basically outlines everything I just mentioned and think that it's the only plot point of the movie. But not only is it just a small piece of the overall premise, but it's not even a vast majority of it. I was actually quite surprised how little that thread was focused on. It doesn't even really come into play until a good chunk into the film. That being said, the other aspects of the film are also done incredibly well and provide more of the emotional impact of the film. His interaction with his mother and sister, who he never really hung out with before, ends up being a huge impact on his life due to the events that occur, as does his interaction with his brother later on, played hilariously and emotionally by Sterling K. Brown. I found myself really relating to him a lot in what I would do in those situations, and while the movie does keep things lighthearted and funny from time to time, these are the moments that really stuck with me just because of how emotionally impactful they were. The movie is very smart with the depiction of this family and the struggles that they go through. It feels very real, which is not only one of the points of the film, but also made me associate closer with the characters themselves. Now I do have to get into spoiler territory to talk about one of the negative aspects of the film, so while I wish I could skip it, I'm gonna need to talk about it just cause it stayed on my mind long after the film was over. At one point in the film, Monk sees another black writer give an excerpt of her book, only for it to come across as pandering, over the top, fake, and throughout the film, he talks about having those thoughts about that book. Later on, he's put in a position where he has to end up working with this writer. And when she's asked about the book he's written, without her knowing that it's him of course, she states the same thing about his book, which of course leads him to question her on her book. The problem here is the argument that pops up because of the result of that. 
I just didn't buy it. Like, Monk is very critical of her book, but he's also very critical of his book, and he wonders why other people like it. Now she, on the other hand, is very critical of his book, but defends her own works, which I felt was very hypocritical, uh, and maybe that was the point of the whole scene, but it felt like the whole thing painted Monk to be in the wrong, which I just didn't think he was. It left me very frustrated and kept me going back to that scene long after the film was over, and I just, I wish the film had painted that entire argument in a different way, because ultimately I just felt it was very weak in general. And while we're on the topic of negative aspects, I will mention how the string of events that play out at the very end is a bit confusing. It's not bad, but there's an element or two about it that, with more focus, could have been cleared up a bit more. I thought it may have been just me at first, until my wife, who I went to go see it with, also mentioned that she was a bit confused with how things turned out. After that, I began wondering how many more people might have been confused with, with the string of events, and if with repeat views, maybe it could clear it up. And then I remembered that the average moviegoer is probably not going to watch this movie more than once. So yes, I do have to count this as a negative. Those two negative aspects aside, the rest of the film is fantastic. And it's freaking hilarious. The group of people that we were in the audience with were laughing their asses off. And I couldn't help but join in as well. A lot of the comedy does stem from the part of the film that has to do with him writing the book and having to pretend to be this person he's not in order to sell the book. Uh, but again, the family aspects do have their funny moments as well, as well as their sweet moments. So overall, it's just a very nice package, which I can completely recommend. The film is very worthy of that Best Picture Oscar nomination it received. I can definitely see myself watching it again and wouldn't mind sharing it with others, which to me is always the sign of a great film. It may falter slightly towards the very end, but the characters, the performances, and the great comedic moments kept this movie positively snuggled in my mind. Definitely deserving of a few awards itself, I give American Fiction a 4.5 out of 5 with a recommendation to buy it. If you're looking for a comedy or something a bit more serious, it's going to work either way for you. So pick up the film and see if it's a bestseller in your eyes. We're thinking we can get it out in time for Juneteenth. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. My first review done with. Nine more films left. I've, I've got a long way to go. I guess come back tomorrow for the next review. And in the meantime, I think I'm going to finish up my book. Thinking of a title, thinking of My Little Furry, Yiffing is Magic. I'll keep working on it. Until then, everybody, stay safe out there and have a good one.